Hey guys, Zapophilia here on the WR test server and today we're going to be discussing everything drones and microchips. So let's jump right into it. It's not a game, it's a red so these are all drones that will be coming into the game. It looks like we'll get the starter and psychic drone for free and then we'll have to purchase or earn the other drones. The drones have uh, tiers from the color the white or blue tier seems to be the lowest from for the starter and psychic drones and then we have a single purple tier drone which has six microchip slots and then we have four of these higher tier drones now each drone is different it has a different description and it has different characteristics the characteristics on drones are battery capacity and microchip sockets and the sockets come in different type now the amount of power cells or gold it takes to deploy your drone is going to depend on the total cost of all the microchips you put in the slots and then each microchip slot is different we're going to check that out on the wasp this first slot right here is for weapons this is the logo right here for weapons uh, this second slot is called an attack slot the third slot is called an effect slot uh, the fourth right here is called uh, repair and shield slot shield and repair while this square shaped slot is called a uh, defense slot moving on let's start with the wasp What's better suited to intimidate your enemies than a giant wasp by your side, a shooting giant wasp at that? So the wasp has a weapon slot. Currently, there are only three bots with weapon slots, the wasp, the sharpshooter, and the eye. Different bots are made by different uh, companies. For instance, Evil Life made the Nebula. It doesn't have a weapon slot. The lower ranked bots also don't have a weapon slot, uh, two of the highest don't have weapon slots but it gives them the chance to get an extra slot and we'll get into that later. So first of all, the weapon uh, microchip slot, rather sockets, the weapon microchip sockets right here. So these are the different kinds of weapons. Uh, bots can put in these slots currently it may look a mess and currently there's no way to delete it seems like a bug in the test server will probably get a way to delete them in the future because you can get multiples but then they have a new system for filtering out things so we're going to look at all the tier 4 weapons because i should have one of each now there are four different kinds of weapons. We have a minigun, a rifle, sorry, a minigun, a rifle, a rocket, and a cannon. And these gun types mimic the gun types of actual normal size robots. The minigun is basically a machine gun, like your temp sorry, tempest is too long, like your Avenger maybe your nucleon all those normal 500 meter machine guns that can fire continuously that's where the minigun comes in your rifle is basically a sniper you can see the range of each weapon right here 500 800 so 500 meters for the minigun the rifle 800 meters basically a sniper rocket uh, is basically your vortex Termite Chimera. No, sorry, R Vortex Termite. Uh, what's the name? Aphid. The, those three uh, 150 meter rockets that fire all at once 
when a player is within that range and Canon is basically your Tulumbus, I guess Cryo. They all have similar ranges. And now weapons are divided into two groups. We have the target seeking weapons, you see that the name, and the imitating weapons. Imitating weapons fire whatever bot your robot is currently aiming at, while target seeking weapons fire automatically any bot. But as of now, not they don't for instance the minigun and the the minigun and the cannon are always record seeking no matter how many times you check that's all we have in the store and the reason for that is the minigun and cannon have a ton of ammo so you're probably going to notice the damage if it attacks someone you're not attacking but in the case of the rifle and the rocket shooter, they don't have those fire rates. They probably fire once, just like an ordinary sniper or rocket in the game. And so you won't notice it if it's hitting random opponents. So I'm sure Pixonic made it to hit only who you're hitting. So first, the target seeking minigun shooter. The chip allows your drone to fire suppressive thanks to its large ammo capacity and high rate of fire so basically a machine gun the drone can shoot independently of the robot that is the target seeking this is the range and the reload time uh, it's permanent and it affects the drone 10 energy requirements and a certain cost of using battle in terms of energy requirements what it means is once you equip this microchip your drone is going to register up here as having used 10 out of 30 possible energy so you can't equip microchips that will take more than 30 energy from the wasp although there are, there's a certain microchip that can decrease the energy cost but we'll get to that later apart from the target seeking rifle excuse me we have the imitating rifle shooter which is a sniper longer range deal high damage over a long distance a drone with this chip supports the robots it shoots exactly who you're shooting same energy cost at tier 4 i have to mention that because these uh, microchips are not upgradable when you buy them you buy them at either tier 1 tier 2 tier, tier 3 and tier 4 the rocket shooter explosive damage 350 meters range you can tell the kind of weapon they are based on this range and this is a 500 meter rocket deal high damage over a long distance it can shoot independently of the robots now as we saw in the store when you, you try to buy these chips they come in different tiers purple means tier 3 gold means tier 4 but then not every tier of every chip is available in the game currently meaning it was either omitted or Pixonic uh, didn't want us to get useless I mean Pixonic thought the lower tiers of some chips were not useful meaning it's very easy to get higher tier chips while it's very difficult to get lower tier chips in terms of the weapons there are no tier 1 or tier 2 currently no idea how that would be in the game but at the very least throughout uh, my test with the microchips the higher tiers are easier to come by so uh, tier 3 they have lower energy costs slash uh, power cell costs <clears throat> and what this means is sometimes maybe you're, you've used a ton of energy in, in other slots you won't be able to equip a higher tier of this and you go for the lower tier the lower tier simply does less damage and as you can see has a higher reload time of almost double which is 20 seconds so that's something to consider for now let's put a rifle on this wasp the imitating rifle Oh yeah, and they also stock up 
if you have two of the same thing it should stock up and show in stock too now we'll move to the attack slots we have tier 1 to tier 4 but some of the troops don't have tier 1 which means it's going to be easier to get higher tier chips based on you know lucky chance so let's start with the raging intensifier when Battleborn is activated, increases robots output damage for 10 seconds. So I should mention all the chips in the attack slot now have intensify in their name. So all they do is they increase your robot's damage, your robot's attack power in when he's attacked in a certain way. Hence being attack microchip um, sockets or slots. So if you have Battleborn on your bot, Battleborn activates the first time you receive damage in a battle if you've equipped the module on your bot. Basically at the highest tier, you're going to get 30% additional damage, which is insane. It's basically another overdrive and it affects your bot. It's temporary because uh, it lasts for 10 seconds, by the way, from the first time Battleborn is activated. And the energy requirements here are 8 energy, so of course you can't put so, sorry, can't put so many. If your robot has multiple attack slots, there's a limit to how many of these you can put on them. And then the inhibited intensifier. As long as the lockdown effect is applied on the robot, increases out its output damage. So if your robot is locked down while your robot is locked down you get 15 percent additional damage since battle one activates only once in battle this in this case every single time you're locked down you get 15 percent additional damage then the mod modulative intensifier after an active module is used it increases the output damage for 10 seconds this one seems a little cracked because some active modules recharge very quickly for instance the normal repair unit recharges every 20 seconds and with some pilot skills you can get that down to 15 seconds something like uh anti-stealth so every time you activate it for 10 seconds you get 15 percent additional damage which is insane same energy costs and hot intensifier as long as robot is immune to freeze effect increases its output damage so when you're hit by certain status effects in ro war robots when the effect ends you have five seconds immunity to that certain effect so what this does is after you've been frozen once you unfreeze automatically and you get that five second immunity to freeze effect as the immunity is there for those five seconds you're going to get 15 percent additional damage it's temporary and it affects your robots not the drone because the robots cannot sorry a drone can't be hit with a status effect as of now struggling intensifier as long as last stand is active increases the robots damage output so last stand lasts as long as its level is a higher level of last stand can last pretty long lower level of last stand doesn't last that long but this is also really interesting when the bot is in last stand it's going to get a 30 percent damage boost so this is a test server we don't know if these are the final values but we'll see uh later it seems intense now but they are also defense drone microchips that can decrease some of the damage you take etc i mentioned increasing robot resistance so this might not be too much of a boost and then revival intensifier after repair unit or advanced repair unit is used those active slots specifically your robots output damage increases by eight percent for 10 seconds 
but this is also interesting because we already have a modulative intensifier and it says after an active module is used for 10 seconds you get 15% additional damage for sorry 15% additional damage for 10 seconds after that and clearly the modulative costs the same as the revival and yet does more damage output so I feel Pixonic might need to get rid of the revival it's not very special since we already have modulative and then the remissive intensifier after the suppression effect expires increases robot output so basically same thing as the um, cooling I think same thing as the hot intensifier in this case when your immunity to suppression kicks in after being suppressed you get 15% additional damage for 5 seconds then the provocative intensifier as the robot is immune to suppression so the provocative intensifier this is basically the same thing as the remissive intensifier based on the dialogue this is when the immunity for suppression kicks in you get this damage so it seems to me that provocative and remissive are just repeats of each other pixonic might have to look into that or give more details you know to explain it better then liberating intensifier once your robot uh, escapes lockdown and the lockdown immunity kicks in you're going to get this amount of damage so as you can see the um, <clears throat> the attack microchip slots this is the logo this triangle what it does is under certain conditions when you're attacked you're going to get a damage boost Oh yeah, and for now, let's equip Liberating Intensifier once you're out of lockdown. Let's equip it on the board. Now, this circle icon is for effects. These effects are basically what we have in the game. We have dead mark, we have lockdown, suppression, defense mitigator, freeze, acid, which is corrosion, etc. Now let's look into all of them. We have in trouble death mark. If the robot receives 50,000 damage in 5 seconds, like for instance, a scorpion appears behind you with storms and deals so much damage this will definitely activate death mark is applied on the enemy now the effects uh, work on your enemy you can see it here it affects enemies temporary and gives you 10 percent additional damage against them so it's uh, similar to a death mark effect here are the energy requirements lockdown are same thing actually not the same thing the lockdown are enables all robot weapons to apply lockdown and this is the charge accumulation but it's written in code so pixonic this is a bug i've noticed in the test server some of the microchips still have their uh code machine language visible visible but basically what this is is uh lockdown accumulation you know you need to accumulate lockdown from glory corona etc but now this gives every weapon the lockdown ability so each weapon gives this certain amount of accumulation so it's not an automatic lockdown like the lockdown module but it accumulates over time like normal lockdown weapons then in trouble suppressor if the robot receives 50,000 damage If the robot receives 50,000 damage in 5 seconds, suppression is momentarily applied on the target enemy which is and it's 75% suppression which is a lot. So I still don't know if these are the final stats because if they are they are pretty 
quite aggressive almost better than some robots uh, abilities but then there are also certain microchips that will decrease the instances of status effects on your bot so they might balance out but i still don't know and then these effects they're grouped into two types they have the normal type and the in trouble type you can see it's a name in trouble death mark in trouble suppressor lockdowner battery micro microchips the in trouble types activate when you receive certain damage just like the disguise units while the normal type just add status effects to your weapons and such then uh, next we have the battery microchip this microchip has an effect on the drone it the, increases the battery capacity of your drone and for instance if we equip install the microchip I mean the battery microchip you see the amount of energy we've used is going to change let's uninstall it now it subtracts um, 8 from the amount of microchips and now it's back to normal or rather we'll just uninstall everything And now it's back to 16 but with the back battery microchip at tier 4 battery microchip by the way tier 4 battery microchip it decreases by 8 and that's its certain effect then to Pixonic, there's another bug in the game. Sometimes when I uninstall the battery microchip, it um, it sort of deletes from my inventory and appears in the store, I guess. So that's it for bat for the battery microchip, and um, we have the defense mitigator adds defense mitigation effect to the drone's weapon now it's not a normal uh, to normal weapons but this is 70 percent defense mitigation basically turning the drone weapon into a titan weapon but i still don't know how much damage a drone weapon can do but at least you can edit it to have um, defense mitigation then suppressor enables all the robot weapons to apply suppression and this is new to war robots suppression has always been unique to the uh, suppressing bots the invader the blitz the raker but now you can add suppression to your weapons which is interesting and what it does charge accumulation Yeah, this suppression is going to uh, have a charge accumulation. It's not a one-time suppression lock. And apparently, it will also <coughs> it will also increase the amount of damage of, I guess, the bots or the drone, but I'm not sure. Anti-acid reduces the intensity of DOT you take 20% less damage from damage over time damage over time you get from dragon's breath on the Aljun, the viper the wasp and the sting <coughs> sorry and also Cerberus's immutability as well as Scorp scorpion's tail laser they all give suppression and now the effect can be reduced with anti-acid by 20%. We have the freezer. All robot weapons to apply freeze. This is also new. Freeze rockets might phase out at this point because you can put freeze on anything in the game now. Uh, these still show uh, code, but what basically what it's saying is it reduces the robot's enemy speed by a certain amount. 35 the amount of damage increases normal freeze rockets do exactly this once you freeze the opponent he slows down and takes more damage so it has a charge accumulation system as well once that's achieved it gives 40 percent extra damage against that enemy 
and slows him down by a uh, particular amount looks like 35 speed points speed units sorry which is significant if you slow any bot by 35 it's going to be ridiculously slow now the control resistor reduces the speed of effect accumulation on the robots and if you have multiple effect slots i guess you can use a ton of this and as you can see minus 30 percent additional damage so while other microchips give status effects we have some that counter status effects so hopefully they balance out in trouble freezer once the robot receives 50,000 damage in five seconds freeze is momentarily applied on the target enemy uh, it has a speed modifier and the damage so this is an instant freeze there's no accumulation here if you get too much damage fast the enemy that's damaging you is going to have to freeze if he doesn't have I guess anti-control and other things and guys anti-control is going to be very overpowered when this update drops because everyone is going to be dropping status effects you're going to want to have anti-control on your bots or certain bot microchips like the control resistor acid sprayer adds DOT to your drones weapons not your normal weapon so it seems only damage over time is still exclusive every other status effect has been add can be added to any weapon you have now these are the different tiers for the different um, effect microchips and guys I should mention that most of these don't have tier 1 microchips the reason for that is probably some of them are too weak and it's just going to decrease the odds of getting good stuff in the store now guys let's try and see how many battery microchips we can put on the battery microchip uh, decreases the battery cost of your bots I want to have a better understanding of how that works exactly and I'm still having that glitch where my battery microchip doesn't show up so often especially the tier 4 let's look at the tier 3 one and we can insert it it's entirely possible that you might not be able to use multiple battery microchips like the exact same chip sorry you might not be able to use multiple of the exact same chip on the same bot so here I have a tier 4 battery microchip here I have a tier 3 battery microchip and you see it basically turned my cost to zero so this could be another strategy in the game where people load their um, drone with battery microchips and then you can put the highest tier on every other spot because if you tried putting gold tier everywhere without these microchips you won't be able to fill all the spots and then in terms of effect module the modules sorry the nebula sorry effect microchips the nebula has the most it has three different effect microchips and you can decrease a lot of the battery requirements there so we're going to be using this just so we can equip stuff into these other slots now this diamond shape is the shield and repair uh, microchip slots or sockets and basically what this does is it repairs your robots under certain conditions currently there are no shields but we know the different kinds of shields in war robots and i'm sure they will be coming in some form now currently since these are all helium microchips they all have repairer in their name there are two types the normal repairer and the rechargeable repairer the normal repairer uh, recharges sorry heals in terms of percentage while rechargeable repairers heal exact amount of HP so let's uh, check it out for instance the crashing repairer it's a normal repairer if the robot receives 
how much damage 100,000 damage in 5 seconds it repairs 40% of its durability and you know this can happen so many times in battle I'm even wondering we may not need a healing module anymore if you can get 40% of your health for receiving just 100,000 damage although you have to receive this damage very rapidly like when you're facing up against many enemies or say a scorpion sneaks up behind you here are the energy requirements but this is still the test server it's likely pixonic is going to reduce some of these stats i guess the stats are high like this so we notice it in battle then the phasing repairer this is interesting when the robot emerges from phase shift it repairs 12 percent of his HP and this may give more use to the phase shift module because right now it's not all that useful since it was nerfed. The rechargeable in trouble repairer. In trouble we know that term in terms of microchips is basically where you receive certain amounts of damage. Rechargeable means it recharges absolute HP as we can see here there's still some code showing if robots receives over 50,000 damage in 5 seconds and this active if robots receives over 50,000 damage in 5 seconds and this activates um, more easily than the last one the last one is 100,000 the normal repairer while the rechargeable repairer is 50,000 damage it repairs 15k HP so this may come in handy with very low HP bots 15,000 anyway 15,000 can't be 40% for any bots but there could be some strategy involved in that since it activates more easily then rechargeable emergency repair when the robots durability falls below 30% it repairs 25,000 HP instantly and it has a cooldown time of 20 seconds and that's one thing to notice with the rechargeable repairers they have cooldown times because of how easy they activate so every five seconds you can activate a rechargeable in trouble repairer repair 15k HP for this the cooldown time is 20 seconds sorry I have a code and finally the rechargeable reconstructive repairer increases the efficiency of the received repair if more than 20,000 durability has been repaired over three seconds and this is quite interesting it has the easiest activation I mean 20,000 HP in three seconds what what the stats say is it in, adds 45,000 HP but based on the description it seems to synchronize with uh, healing modules and other microchips to I guess make them heal you faster if the cooldown time 10 seconds and the energy cost is as on the screen now these are the different tiers currently only two of these have tier one slots which is good because we don't want the tier one although we may have use for the tier three and tier two just to decrease uh, energy costs and last but not least this square shape um, signifies defense slots and what this does it gives your robot defense points resistance under certain conditions now here are all the defense uh, microchips first of all the rechargeable wreckage defender when robots durability falls below 50 percent it increases the power of robots defense system so uh, similar to last stand or overdrive or something or death survivor when your robots durability falls below 
you get 25 extra defense points there's a cooldown in case you heal up and try to go below 50% again it won't work until the 10 second cooldown is active 25 defense points is about 18% resistance but clearly you can stack up resistance if you have multiple defense uh, sockets for microchips uh, revival defender after repair unit or advanced repair unit is used you get 25 defense points for 10 seconds which is interesting after healing your defense increases chilling defender if freeze charge on robots reaches 50 percent now we know freeze accumulates in war robots so if it accumulates up to the half point you're going to get 35 extra defense points for five seconds cooldown of 10 seconds and uh, this can be quite useful because 35 is a little more significant than 25 we already have 25 resistance sorry 25 defense points from pilot skills then we have the cooling defender different from the chilling defender when the robot's ability switches to cooldown increases the power of its defense system for 10 seconds so when your robot's ability deactivates let's say an Aljun drops to the ground then for 10 seconds you're going to get 25 defense points this could be useful for robots with very long cooldown times and considering uh, cooldowns uh, is at a maximum of 23 to 25 so 10 seconds is about half the cooldown time and you have defense points in that situation inhibitor defender as long as the lockdown effect is applied so if your if your robot is locked down while locked down you get 60 additional defense points which is very significant 60 defense points could be about 35 percent resistance i'll have to confirm that but it's a lot of resistance actually although if you want something like 90 percent resistance you're going to need 900 defense point but if you um use different defense microchips in your different slots for instance the wasp has two slots you can achieve uh, maybe about 100 defense points which is 50 percent resistance so inhibitor that activates based on lockdown then appeased defender is also an effect based on as long as your robot is suppressed you get 60 additional defense points i mentioned 100 defense points is 50 percent resistance so this is very useful i mean when you're suppressed you don't want to keep firing you just want to survive the suppression so this should come in handy rechargeable emergency defender when robots durability falls below 30 percent it increases your defense system by 55 and we already had a uh, yeah we had a wreckage defender for 50 percent it increases by 25 uh for 10 seconds i guess actually there's no time i mean there's no time for how long it lasts but it's probably 10 seconds for both of these but pixonic should consider adding that to the game so i mean if you have both the rechargeable emergency defender and let's say they appeased you're already looking at 50 percent resistance in a specific situation though that's when your bot drops below 30 percent and has a certain status effect these are the energy costs they all look the same and that might change in the future but i have no idea halting defender if lockdown charge and robot reaches 50 percent this is same thing as chilling defender but with lockdown this time you get 35 additional defense points so everything in the defense slots gives you defense points but you should remember that titan weapons and the titan weapons and a certain attack chip 
defense mitigator effect chip can bypass most of that resistance pretty easily for instance i mentioned 100 defense points is about 50 percent resistance but then we have 70 percent resist um, mitigator on the defense mitigator but it's on the drone's weapon and it might not do much damage but i can't imagine equipping extra defense uh, microchips on bots with high resistance like a leech uh, an owl our guang phantom scorpion etc they might become too op but we just have to wait and see how the game turns out so these are the different tiers so guys those were all the microchips in every slot let's go over the slots each bot has the starter uh, has four battery capacity one attack slot one defense slot the sidekick has six battery capacity, one attack, one repair and shield slots. The glider, uh, made by Space Deck, has 26 battery capacity, one effect slot, three attack slots, two defense slots, two repair and shield. The three attack is significant. You can accumulate a lot of attack boosts basically like having three overdrives but in certain conditions and then the eye the eye has a weapon is the first on the list of bots i've said now that has a weapon it's not said here but it looks like it's made by dsc it has 30 battery capacity one energy for shooting when it with the energy shells then we have uh, two effect slots, three attack slots, one defense, one repair and shield, and one arms controller. The arms controller is the weapon. Sharpshooter, 20 batch capacity, energy for shooting, one effect slot, one defense slot, three repair and shield, one arms controller. Arms controller is the weapon. And then let's finish off with the nebula nebula doesn't have a weapon it's made by evil life 26 batch capacity three effect slots two attack slots two defense slots one repair and shield slot and then the wasp the wasp um 30 batch capacity well i've equipped stuff in the slots but one weapon slots i guess one attack slot it's not clear from there okay it is one attack slot two effect slots one repair two repair and shield slots one defense slot and look at the deployment cost 34 power cells all 24 gold and that's the accumulation of what i have so let's um equip it fully and see how much it becomes let's use this inhibitor defender so when I'm locked down, I get 60 extra defense. And Pixonic, I want you guys to know that the logo here isn't correct. It should be defense, not increased damage. And then there should be another inhibited. Maybe it's the appeased. No, not this one. Halton. So halting when the lockdown accumulation reaches 50%, I get 35 defense points. Combine that with um, combine that with the inhibited uh, defender, and if it's timed correctly, I can get up to 95 defense points at once. If I'm locked down quickly, I'm going to get it. And finally, you can see there's a restriction here because I don't have enough energy spots so let's equip this instead this is where a lower tier microchip comes in handy 
and also to demonstrate something else if you try to uninstall the battery microchip it's not going to work because the remaining energy is then going to be too high so you have to uninstall other microchips before uninstalling the battery microchip and right now you can see the cost right here 54 although if we open we see it clearly so you're going to need 54 power cells to deploy this in battle it's okay but it's significant and there's another need for lower tier uh, microchips it also decreases the deployment cost so thanks for watching guys make sure to leave a like share subscribe and let's jump into a battle so you choose the bot then you choose the drone So that was some interesting gameplay. I still can't notice the drone firing, maybe because this is still a test. But in game, hopefully, we'll be able to see our little sidekick shooting beside us. Now, uh, for the guys at Pixonic, I'm going to try and summarize my feedback and the bug reports. First of all, I think the weapon microchip socket should be more special than this it should have a highlight a frame or something so it's clearer that this particular drone has a weapon and that is the slot secondly it's not clear if you can equip the exact same microchip in two uh, different slots two different slots of the same type I mean the exact same microchip of the ex exact same tier for instance the battery microchip and also sometimes when I uninstall the battery microchip I can't find it in my inventory I go to the store and buy it again could be a glitch and then some microchips are still showing code in their description so for instance the freeze, freezer microchip 
I went through everything in this video so it will be clear if you watch the video which ones have the code for instance here it says mech speed modifier underscore description so I don't know if that's intentional but that's what I've noticed so far uh, all in all it's a very interesting update and I can't wait for it so guys please subscribe leave a like share and as always stay humble